Yo, good morning guys, July 5th today. And in this video, you guys are gonna learn how to quickly grow and scale your video or photo business. But before we dive into that, gonna be vlogging a little bit, showing you guys what we're gonna be up to at the office today. I brought on a new person to the team, a new creative who's gonna be helping out while I step out of office when the baby comes. So gonna be excited to show you guys some training we're gonna be doing around the office. What are you working on, baby mama? <laughs> I'm making breakfast. <laughs> How are you feeling? Uh, good, better today. A little tired after the 4th of July. I've had a lot of fun, had the family over yesterday. Yo, what's going on guys? So just made it back to the office. So after a holiday weekend, so it was 4th of July this weekend, typically I take a couple days off for the weekend. So coming back to the office in the morning is usually the follow-ups. So for the first hour, two or three, that's when I do all my admin tasks whether it's at home in the morning or back in the office. So you can see here I'm back on the computer. What I mean by admin stuff is usually I'll do email responses, follow-ups um, with people in the pipeline who were interested maybe in the last week or two, sending out a follow-up email just to make sure um, that they received my previous email or just to remind them about the project that they inquired about. And then also sending out maybe invoices that aren't paid yet or just you know remaining balances that aren't paid and just keeping in touch with all the clients who are still in the pipeline because the client experience is one of the most important things when people choose to work with you and why people continue to work with you. So I'll be talking about client experience later on when I talk about how to scale your creative business. But yeah, that's what the morning usually looks like after a holiday weekend or just start of the week. Back in the office today, we're doing headshots with Gary. What's up, man? What's going on, I'm Gary. We've got Trevor, Trevor right nice here. Trevor, nice to meet you. So, Getting set up. And then our second production we're doing later today, client just dropped off some props. Let's see what's in the bag. We're going to be doing a product ad. Um, got a lot of produce here. We're going to be shooting some green juice. Let's see what it looks like. Boom. All right, headshots going down back here at the HQ. Got Trevor behind the camera. Scotty helping out on set. See how this goes. I think it's gonna go good. Think setup looks good? Yeah. Yeah, we'll see. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> I don't know how I feel about that. No, Gary's not looking good. good. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's smiling, yeah. Smile for this one. All right, guys, doing production in the back studio today. We got a product shoot going down in the back. You can see right there team is getting some cool shots for a greens juice we have a shot list behind me that they created and now they're just following that shot list just to stay organized stay on top of their production and then after every usable shot scotty is going to be writing down the file name just for myself to know which one's usable if they're doing 20 takes for a specific shot we know which one's usable so when we're in post-production it's a lot more efficient. What are we shooting, Scotty? Uh, today we are shooting kind of a product placement video for Liquids and eClean Phoenix. So as you can see over here, we have Trevor lining up the shot with a bunch of greens and vegetables and fruits. Just trying to make that aesthetic appeal, you know, to make it something pop instead of just being a bottle of something. So yeah. So as Gordon briefly touched on earlier, before any shoot that we do, we always break down something in a shot list. Uh, so, you know, Trevor and I got together really quick and broke this down just so we have everything in place so we know exactly what we're doing at exactly the right time. So really quick, we started with the bottle coming out of the greens. So we want to kind of have like a really cool, uh, I guess, opening shot that catches your eye. So we're going to have, so what we did is we dropped the bottle into the greens. We're going to reverse that so it's coming out, it hits the camera. Next up, we're going to the bottles and the logos. This is more of the product, so we really want to focus in on, okay, what do you see in here? What is the brand, I guess you could say, uh, behind it? Close-up spin of the bottle, just getting more of the ingredient logo. So, you know, we've got the greens on the table underneath it, so we really want to show those ingredients. We really want them to pop. So, obviously, that's over on the table. Uh, Close-up of the protos, we really want to know what's in this. So, you know, we've got everything that's inside that juice laying on that table, so it gives that kind of, like, you know, connective tissue, I guess you could say, between your eye and what you're thinking about. So it goes together very well. Uh, bottle in the foreground, chopping the veggies in the back. This is just kind of an extra aesthetic shot. So the bottle and then getting really down and dirty in the background, showing you before you juice it. Cap twist, that's gonna be kind of like our little ah, kind of moment. So click the cap, that comes off. Bottle pulling out of frame, get that quick eye pull to it. 
and then bottle slamming back down on the table so the bottle hits. Liquids hopefully come out, gives it more of an aesthetic appeal, get kind of creative with the lens. Um, and then that's gonna end with the bottle and the ingredients pulling out. So, you know, the, it's gonna hit the bottle, explodes, pulling out, black, and then cuts to the logos. What are you setting up right here, Trev? Grabbing a product shot of the drink. I'm envisioning we're gonna shoot this one vertical. All right, now time to get to the fun stuff. So you guys want to learn how to grow and scale your creative business. That's why you're watching this YouTube video. So number one is to utilize social media, utilize Instagram and Facebook to scale your business. So number one would be to optimize your Instagram. So when I talk about optimizing it, are people gonna know what you do and are people gonna know where to go after looking at your profile? So for me, I have a business profile page. I'm gonna show you guys right now. Here's a screenshot of it. So in my name portion, I have Lee Visuals. That's the name of my business. When they type it in in the IG search, that's gonna pop up, so that's great. And then within that line, I have video marketing. If they're typing in video marketing or video marketer, my name should pop up as well. That will help with the keywords and search. So moving on would be the Instagram bio. So what else do I have in there? So the first line should be to give everybody an idea of what you do right when they reach your page. So by the time they read that first line, they should know exactly what you do, who you serve, and if they're the right fit for them to work with. So for me, I put recreate scroll stopping content for e-commerce brands and digital entrepreneurs. So that's pretty straightforward. We create engaging content and who's it for? It's for e-commerce brands, so people who sell a product. So those are the people I'm speaking to, and if they currently do that, they know that I'm a right fit for them. So what else do I offer? Below that, I put video, photo, and strategy. Those are the three pillars that we currently offer. And then a call to action. Work with us with the arrow pointing down to my website link. So they know exactly where to go and what to do if they're interested in working with me. So if your IG bio isn't optimized, these are some things you guys should consider to work on. Moving on, how do I utilize IG to increase lead gen or get more business. So think of Instagram as a funnel. It's the top of your funnel. A funnel is in this shape. It's like an upside down triangle. When you hear the term funnel, you have to figure out what's at the top of the funnel and what's at the bottom of the funnel and what's in between. So at the top of the funnel, and for example, I'm gonna utilize Instagram. That's gonna be the top of my funnel. That's gonna be all the free content that I share, my portfolio work that I share, and that's the people that are at the top of my funnel. And going down from that, how do they get to the second tier of the funnel? So that's landing on my website. So after they go on my Instagram page, they're interested. Now they click the link in my bio, which is leevisuals.com. That moves them down, down my funnel to that second tier. So now that they're interested and now that they're a warm lead, if they look at everything on my website and know that they are still interested and they want to learn more, that moves them down to the contact form, moving down my funnel into the very bottom portion, which I'll talk about. So once they fill out the contact form and I send out a questionnaire, blah, 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 talk with them um, via discovery call and send them a proposal, lock them in at the bottom of my funnel, that's when I close them as a client and that's when they pay. So think of your business, figure out what the structure of your funnel is and optimize your business and social media revolving around that. Number two will be referral based. Is your company currently structured to attract more clients via referrals? Word of mouth marketing is crucial in order to grow your small business, especially if you don't have any money or a current budget for Facebook ads, Instagram ads, or just pay traffic in general. What's the easiest way to grow and scale your business for free? And that will have to be referrals. I talked about this in my recent podcast, and I'm gonna show you guys a quick snippet from what I talked about during that podcast if you guys didn't watch it yet. So how do you get more referrals? Like I said, building more relationships. So anybody that you come across, just be a good person. Let them know what you do. Don't be afraid to let them know. Like, yo, I offer video services. I specialize in real estate videos or I'm a wedding photographer and I would love to capture your wedding or anybody else you know. Don't be afraid to ask them and let them know what you do. The more specific you get with your ask, the easier it is for them to refer you. So for example, 
For me, I like to specialize and niche down to e-commerce. So as a creative agency, I would like to only work with people who sell a product or have a product and have an e-com business. So if I tell people that, then they know that when they come across someone who sells products, they'll know at the top of their head, oh, Gordon has a creative agency who specializes just in e-com. So it's gonna be easier for them to refer people to me rather than me being just a videographer. They don't want to refer people to me if I'm just doing a little bit of everything. And of course, when we're first starting out, it's easy to dabble in every niche and I highly recommend people doing that. But as you progress in your business, I would suggest you guys niche down to two or three different niches. Don't say you could do everything, even though you might be able to. Um, the more you niche down, the better. So when people, let's say if one of my buddies has a friend who is selling jewelry and they need content for their business, all right, Gordon specializes in e-com videos, so now he could shoot that product. But if one of their other buddies needed a wedding videographer, they might not refer them to me because I don't specialize in that and that's okay. If they do refer them to me, I could either take it on and not promote that work or I could refer them to someone else in my network that specializes in that and they would definitely appreciate that as well. Number three would be to elevate your experience for your clients. What is your customer experience like? How are you different from other competitors in the area? And it's a client experience. When people work with you, are you offering them an experience that is you know, high tier and the best out there? If you're not, figure out what you can do better. What can you do to improve the whole client experience from very the very beginning to the very end? So not just working with them in person, but from the beginning of when they first interact with you. So the whole pre-production, before the pre-production, up into the production, so working with them in person. How's that experience, you know, high tier? Are you a premium service? Are you offering a premium level of experience? All the way up to the very end and after the delivery of the videos or the photos. Are you following up the clients afterwards? Are you sending them client gifts? Or what are you currently doing that is better than other people out there? If you figure out what that is and figure out what you can do better to improve on the client experience, you're gonna set yourself way higher and way way apart from all your competitors because you're doing something different from other people. All right, quick tip. So for client experience, what I mean, what what is an example of client experience? So we just finished up with a photo shoot for headshots. If you guys want to improve your client experience, one thing you guys could do right now is figure out what you could do to improve your turnaround time. A lot of people like their content back relatively quick. Some people, which is like a you know 20% of clients, understand that the process might take longer, but if it's headshots or photos, that's something you could um, deliver pretty quick within the same day, if not within the next 24 hours, that's gonna help improve your client experience by over delivering, letting them know, all right, in the package, we might've said, you'll receive all your content within one week, but if you turn it around within the same day, they're gonna be very impressed. And number four would be to outsource and scale your creative team. If you guys are currently burnt out, if you have too much work coming in and you're handling it all yourself, what can you do to improve that situation? The last thing you want to do is, you know, go from what used to be a passion for creativity, for, you know, video, for photo, and lose that passion because you're just so burnt out in all the client work you're currently doing. So what can you do to improve that situation? What you could do is start to outsource, start to build a team and start to delegate and outsource these tasks to other people that could handle these things that you don't need to work on. So for example, what are some things that you could let go in your business right now to give you more time to work on your business, to scale your business rather than work in your business? So for me, as a business owner, I don't want to be wearing all of the hats in my business, although that's something crucial to know and to learn. Um, from the beginning because you know how it should be done for you to let someone know, oh, this is how I want things to be run in my business and this is what I expect. And when they deliver meeting your expectations, amazing. And if they don't meet it, you know what you can do and what you can share to improve that circumstance. Some things that helped me out tremendously was 
having a video editor on staff to outsource some of my video editing projects too because I know that that was a lot of time I was investing in at night or during the day and all week long was editing video projects that I might you know maybe didn't need to be doing and at the very beginning I was you know very skeptical your clients expect something and you think you could only deliver this quality but once you bring on someone and trust in someone to deliver um, something that you could ultimately deliver yourself if not even better which would be amazing then that would you know make you way less stressed way less burnt out because now you're not doing this specific task and you found someone else who could potentially even do it better, now you can work more on your business. Ask yourself, what are some things you could currently do right now and dish off to someone else, even if it's just part-time? Could it be admin roles, editing roles, a production assistant to help you on set. Think about that specific position and then start to look for that person. In order to scale your business, you're gonna to have to scale your team. And to scale your team, you're gonna to have to dish off some of your profits to grow these other positions as well. You can't just bring in every single dollar and take in every dollar and keep it in your pocket. And number five is pretty simple, but just stay on top of your game. As a business owner, as a videographer, photographer, whatever you guys call yourself, try to stay on top of your game and deliver the highest quality stuff you guys could possibly do. So don't ever get stagnant, don't ever get complacent with the work you currently deliver because there's gonna be people out there, other competitors who are currently gonna, you know, pass you up if you just stop improving your level of creativity. In order to get that creativity back, maybe start doing some spec work, start doing some stuff for fun to get your creative juices rolling so you could promote some of that work and show people, oh, I don't just do corporate stuff, but I could do this amazing, you know, after effects and animation stuff as well. And you never know who that's going to, you know, attract. What I like to do is maybe once a month is figure out what are some fun projects you could currently work on, um, whether it's for a paid client or not for a paid client. It could be spec work. And what spec work is, is pretty much stuff you create for fun and potentially create a, let's say a video that was for a paid client or just for a client who, you know, is more so a fun project that you create to attract more paid clients, to show them what you could create if you don't currently have this in your portfolio. Never lose a passion for why you started this business in the beginning and always look for ways you could elevate not only your creativity in regards to deliverables for your clients, but your business as well. So whether that's finding systems to improve within your business, that's gonna go a long way. All right, so that pretty much wraps up this video. If you guys are currently a beginner and you were looking for video tips on how to pursue a full-time career for video production or photography, or if you currently started your full-time gig but just wanted some more business tips, hopefully you found this video helpful. Also drop in the comments your biggest takeaway from this video. And if you guys haven't already, hit that subscribe button and I'll be dropping more videos every single month also, if you guys haven't watched my previous video, you guys could click this right here. I dive into how to make over 10K a month as a videographer or photographer. So watch that video and let me know what you guys think. See you guys in the next one.